Hi, so this is our next video update on our project testing of the current model STI. So here we are in uh, May 2018. You'll remember in our previous video, we said we're gonna do some testing to see what power and reliability and torque we can get out of this engine with just the first stage of custom tuning because you may be looking at modifying your 2.5 liter STI, remembering this engine has now been around for over 10 years. And of course, Subaru in the period of time since this engine was originally do, uh, released have had a steady upgrade of minor mechanical modifications, emission-based stuff, um, the changes of configuration of the engine as well. And here we are now knowing what we can deliver and we're gonna do some more testing in these videos to substantiate our historical data. So what we're gonna talk about in this video is what can you reliably expect to get out of the engine from a performance improvement without any mechanical modification. So I get my camera in you say it's got a standard air box. We've got the standard original intercool. You notice the dyno fan is still connected, which you'll see in our previous video on how it works. We've got a standard exhaust. The engine has been completely rebuilt. It's got factory standard hypertectic pistons. The only thing we're doing now is changing what we can change through the factory ECU using race ROM technology. And the good news is we've backed up our data based on our power kits, which remember we spoke about, we give these kits with factory warranty guarantee. So we're not gonna explore the limits of silly boost numbers where you um, start opening um, a whole can of worms with uh, pen, uh, piston durability. We want something that we know is gonna last. And in this package, the I'll show you, um, I've got the graphs here to refer to, but we'll drop them into the video now and you can see. So the first graph we're gonna talk about is um, manifold boost and air fuel ratio. So in this one, you'll see the blue graph rep represents a manifold boost which is on the left-hand side of the graph, and you'll see it's measured at manifold ABS pressure and PSI. So effectively, at around 3,500 RPM, the car passes 17 PSI boost and touches about 17.5 PSI. But what's really interesting, and that's the level that we're comfortable with from a durability point of view, and it's not that much different to Subaru, is at around 5,000 RPM, you'll see the boost curve and the blue line start dropping off. And once it gets to say 6,300, the boost has now dropped below 15 PSI. Now that's not nothing to do with the tune. It just means the turbo can't continue to maintain the same level of boost for the engine RPM, because as engine speed increases, it's harder and harder for the turbo to keep up with that. But also at the same time, we start exploring the limitations of the restrictions of the turbo's capacity to get air in through that standard air box and the engine, and then get the air out through the standard exhaust. So you'll see the green line at the bottom, which is AFR or air fuel ratio is measured on the right hand side of the graph. And you'll notice at around 3,200 RPM, when we start heating peak boost matched by the blue line above, we start getting some pretty standard and some, um, some consistent fuel mixtures of around 11.5 to 11.75 um, AFR. Now, if you're thinking that there's some holy grail of a huge increase in power one point above or one point below those mixtures, I can tell you we've actually tested that as well and they don't exist. And you're wondering why the um, fuel mixtures change so dramatically before it comes on boost. Well, that's just a, a consideration of why the engine's operating below 3200 RPM. And from our point of view, we don't change too much of the initial uh, setup of the car around idle or before it start coming under boost. And those are some of the areas that we can talk about later. But let's just talk about fuel mixture at the moment. So at the moment, the car's still running standard injectors. We're running 98 octane fuel here in Australia. And this is what we want to tune and use this as an example of the package of performance parts that we're building with this X8 power kit and repeating ourselves and checking our data. So let's now um, talk about the next graph, which is what everybody wants to see. And on this particular graph, we're talking about power and torque. The blue line, which is measured on the left, is newton meters torque measured at the wheel hubs because we've got a hub dyno. We don't have any frictional losses through the wheels on the rollers. We have no wheel slip. The Dynapack hub dyno is incredibly accurate and repeatable. And the good thing is we don't have any variation due to how hard you tie it down on the dyno or what type of tread you run on your car. And in this situation, we are comparing um, factory standard compared to what we believe is a reliable package. And you'll see the blue line already at 2,400 RPM starts exceeding the light blue line, which is the factory standard car. And it continues to peak at around 415 Newton meters at 3,600 RPM. Now you'll notice that the same Newton meters factory standard at the blue line, um, the light blue line, factory standard this car at the bottom of that dip where 
um, it climbs and then falls over, is only a little bit above 340 newton metres. So that mid-range increase in power is a substantial um, improvement that you'll feel when you're driving the car. And this is what can be substantially relied upon in the mid-range opportunity of improving the car's performance. But the important part, you'll also notice there is a substantial increase in power, which is the green line measured on the right-hand side of the graph. And you'll notice peak power at the top is 205 kilowatts um, in the dark green line, as opposed to a little bit below that. But let's just look at the power figures at 3,600 RPM. And if you follow that, green, that line vertically, you'll see factory standard power on the light green line is just about, say, 120, 130 um, kilowatts measured at the hubs. And if you follow that line further forward up to the dark green line, you'll see it's well over, say, 155, maybe even 160. So that mid-range increase in punch from a power point of view is what you'll also feel as well, which is what makes the car feel a bit quicker. And we adjust those settings to be um, changed with the SI drive, remembering this car's got three modes, and we can change those settings in the SI drive as well. But the point I wanna to touch on most importantly is look at the blue line above 4,600. You'll notice the torque just falls dramatically off until above 6,000 RPM. Your torque figure is only a barely 300 Newton meters, whereas, at 4,400 RPM, the torque is well above 400. And the reason is that's further example of the, the car's turbo dynamics unable to flow enough grunt to continue the increase in power and performance. And you'll notice the green line, which is power, starts to flatten off as well. So what are these data? What does this graph tell us? Well, remember down inside here, and I get my camera to show you, is original factory standard turbo. And the, the secret to this is that turbo there Above 5,000 RPM, as shown on the green line on the power figures, physically cannot flow any more grunt and maintain the boost. And that shows us in the, um, the power figures of that graph. So you might say, well, what would be the next thing that we would want to test on the car? And you might say, well, factory standard exhaust, factory standard to, um, uh, airbox, maybe we'll put a turbo on it and pump more grunt. Well, maybe we might run out of injector duty cycle, put bigger injectors on it. Maybe it might be restriction in the airbox or maybe just the exhaust system. Well, this is what we're going to be testing and repeating our data and confirming our historical information in the next range of videos. So follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. Um, have a check out of our other videos associated with this project car and we'll be answering those questions next when we get the car back on the dyno after some more road testing with other mechanical modifications other than just custom tuning of the factory you see. And remember, wherever you are in the world, we'd love to help you. And if you need custom tunes anywhere in Australia, you can contact us and we can do work on your car locally to you through one of our partner networks where we can give you that peace of mind and reliability as well. But for now, my name is Brett Middleton. Look forward to giving you another update in our next video. Bye for now.